everyone, welcome back to A Plus Maths. I'm Heidi Postel. Today I'd like to do domain and range. The domain of a graph tells us what the possible x values are and the range will give us the possible y values. Let's have a look at an example. Let's take y equals x plus 1. You should know that that's a straight line and when you have a straight line y equals mx plus b goes through 1 on the y-axis and it's a positive gradient so it will look like that. Let's think about what the domain is. What are the possible x values? What can x actually be? Take a look at your diagram. Can x be 0? Yes. Can x be 2? Yes. x can be anything. That means that it's all real x. And you can write that as like this. For all, the upside down a means for all, x is an element of the real numbers, or you can just write all real x. Now there's different ways that we can write the domain and the range, and you have to know the different types or the different ways to express the domain and range. One of these is called interval notation. Interval notation just means that we've got to say where does it go from and to? So what do the x values here go from and to? Well, can't I do minus infinity to infinity? They can be any values. So we write from minus infinity to infinity. And then we have to put brackets around it. Now the brackets are really important. If you don't want to include the actual numbers, like from minus infinity to infinity, we don't actually want to include infinity because infinity can keep going. So we put the round brackets in. That's important. Now let's take a look at set notation. Set notation is when you use the curly brackets. So we do the domain is, you put your colon, then you put a curly bracket. Now we want to do domain, that's the x values. A vertical line means such that x is an element of all the real numbers, just like we did originally. And don't forget to close your curly brackets. Now let's take a look at the range. What's the range of this line? Well, let's take a look. The y values can be anything as well, can't they? can be anything as well, just like the x values. So the domain is for all y is an element of r, or we can write all real y. And now we want to write it into interval notation and set notation. So interval notation just says from where to where. So we know it's from minus infinity to infinity, because it goes from any numbers on the bottom to the top. And we don't want to include the minus infinity and infinity because they never end. So you put round brackets, right? Good. And set notation is where we put the curly brackets. So we put an R so that we indicate that we're doing the range. Put a colon, your curly brackets, and then we write Y, because we're doing the range, such that Y is an element of all the real numbers, which really just means all the values of it, all the values of Y. Here's another one. Y equals the square root of X. You should know what this looks like. Hopefully you all agree. Now we want to think about what's the domain. So the domain is what again? The possible X values. Good. So what are the possible X values? Let's take a look. Can X be zero? Yes. Can x be negative 1? No, there's no graph over there at negative 1. Can x be 1 or 2 or 3? Yes, it can. So x can basically be what? Anything that's above 0. So we know that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we can write that as for all x is greater than or equal to 0. You don't really need the for all, but if you know the upside down a means for all, then you can add it in. Now we want to write it in interval notation. What's interval notation again? That's where we go from and to. Well, we know that this graph exists from zero to infinity. So it's from zero to infinity, but we want to include zero this time, don't we? Because it can equal zero. So we need to put a square bracket on the left of the zero because we want to include the zero. We don't want to include the infinity, so we put a round bracket on the other side of infinity. Now let's have a look at the set notation. What do we do? We're writing domain, so D colon, curly brackets, 
the x value such that x is greater than or equal to 0. I think the set notation is the easiest if you've already thought about what the possible x values were originally. It's basically the same, it's just put into the right notation. Great. Let's do range. What's the range? Have a look at your picture. What's on the diagram? What can y be? Can y be negative 1? No. Y can be 0? Yes. Y can be 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? It'll keep going. So this one has all the y values bigger than or equal to 0. So we write that down. Don't forget that it can be greater than or equal to. Be careful of that. And now we want to do interval notation. From something to something else. Well this one we want to go from 0 to infinity. But remember we want to include the 0. And what do you do when you want to include it? Good. You put a square bracket. So it's going to be a square bracket 0, comma, infinity. And then what type of bracket afterwards? A round bracket. Good. Why? Because it doesn't equal infinity. It keeps going. And then set notation. That's our curly brackets. And how do we write that? We're doing the range. So you put an R, colon, curly bracket. You want the values of Y such that, the vertical line, Y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's have a look at another one. We all know what this graph looks like. Y equals X squared. A nice parabola. There it is. Think about what's the domain. The domain is what? The possible x values. What can x be in this graph? Think about it. x can be, well, we can start at 0. It could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, yes, 3, 4. Well, x can be anything, can't it? So, if x can be anything, then we want all real x. All real x. The easiest way to do domain and range is to draw the picture first. Because once you've drawn it, you should be able to look at that and go, oh, I can see what the X can be and what the Y can be. It just makes it a little bit easier. Good. Now we have to write it in the other notation. We have two different types of notation. Interval notation and set notation. Usually, you can choose whichever way you want to write the answers. But if they ask for one in particular, then you have to obviously answer it the way that they ask. Or, if the question gives you the domain and the range, then you have to know what they're talking about. You have to understand what's being given to you. So with interval notation, remember, what are we doing? Where all we need to do is to write down where it's going from and to. Well, in this case, it's from minus infinity to infinity. So we put minus infinity to infinity. And what type of brackets do we need around it? The round ones. Good, because we don't want it to include those values. And then we do set notation, which is with the curly brackets. So we have the domain, D, colon, curly brackets, the values of X, such that is a vertical line, X is an element of all the real numbers. Because that means all the X values. How was that? Starting to get the hang of it now? Let's have a look at the range. So what's the possible Y values? And what are the possible Y values here? Well, we've got any value of y that's bigger than 0. So that's y is greater than or equal to 0. Be careful, it can equal 0 as well because we can colour that dot in at the centre. How do we write that in interval notation? Well, what do we know of the values? From 0 to infinity. So it's 0 to infinity, 0 comma infinity. Can it equal 0? Yes. That means that we put a square bracket on the left and it can't equal infinity, so we put a round bracket on the right. Starting to get the hang of it. Now let's take a look again at set notation. Set notation is with the curly brackets. So we're going to do R colon curly brackets with range. So it's a Y such that is a vertical line. Y is greater than or equal to zero. And then close your curly brackets. All right. Let's take a look at a hyperbola. Y equals one on X plus one. Don't worry, we're going to go through enough of these questions so that you have an idea of what to do for any type of graph that you get given. Here we have a hyperbola. We know that x can't equal negative 1. That's our asymptote. So let's think about what's the domain of this. Basically, x can be anything except for x can't equal negative 1, right? That's where our asymptote is. So how do we write that as... How can we write that down? We can write... 
For all, remember that's the upside down A, for all X is an element of the real numbers, comma, except X can't equal negative 1. Or you can write all real X, comma, X can't equal negative 1. And you can write the word except if you want to as well. In interval notation, this one's a little bit tricky because we really have two intervals. You've got the left-hand side and you've got the right-hand side. The left-hand side is going to be from minus infinity to negative 1. And then the right-hand side is going to be from negative 1 to infinity. Of course, it can't equal any of these values. It can't be negative infinity, so that's going to have a round bracket next to it. And it can't equal negative 1, so that's got to have a round bracket next to it. Now, what's that funny symbol in the middle? That U in the middle means it can be either the left-hand side or it can be the right-hand side. And so you put the U, which means union, in the middle of your interval notation when you have different sections. And in set notation, we've got the domain is the curly brackets, X, the values of X, such that, that's your vertical line, X is an element of the real numbers, comma, X can't equal negative 1, and close your brackets. Now let's think about the range. What's the range again? That's the possible Y values. Well, what can Y be? Well, Y can also be anything except for Y can't equal 0, because that's an asymptote as well. Don't forget about your horizontal asymptote in a hyperbola. Remember, there are two asymptotes, your vertical asymptote and your horizontal asymptote. So here we have all real y, except y can't equal 0. And now we have to do that in interval notation. The same way we did in domain, we have to split it up into two different sections. That means we need to have that union in the middle. And then you do the bottom half and the top half. So we have from minus infinity to 0, union together with 0 to infinity. And of course, they're all round brackets because we don't want to include any of the values. And in set notation, how would we do this? We would have it's the range, the R, colon, curly bracket, Y, such that Y can't equal 0. What if we have Y equals X plus 2 all squared minus 1? So this is a parabola. Move to the which way? Left, good, because it's a plus 2, so it moves to the left 2, and the whole thing goes down 1 because of the minus 1. Good. So what are the possible, what's the possible x values? Well, x can be anything, so it's all real x. And we can write it like this. In interval notation, what do we do? We say that it's going to be from minus infinity to infinity. And of course, they can't equal either one of those, so we put it inside round brackets. Good. And when we're ready to do set notation, we would write D colon curly brackets X such that X is an element of the real numbers. Now let's do the range. If we take a look at this diagram, you can see that the Y values are only the ones that are above y equals minus 1. So we know that the domain is y is greater than or equal to minus 1. Be careful, it can actually equal to the minus 1. And in interval notation, we would write it goes from minus 1 to infinity. Remember though that this one can actually include the minus 1, so we put square brackets around the minus 1, and then on the right hand side of the infinity, we don't put the square brackets, we need round brackets because it doesn't equal infinity. And of course in set notation, we would have R colon curly brackets Y such that Y is greater than or equal to negative 1. Close the curly brackets. We can also do polynomial graphs like this one. Now a lot of you already know how to draw them and some of you won't know how to draw them. So I'll draw this picture. It's going to look like this. So let's just have a look at the domain and the range. Don't be overly concerned if you actually don't know how to draw it. That's all right. So what's our domain? It's the possible X values. And what are the possible x values here? What do we have? Well, it can be any values of x, can't it? There's nothing restricted here. There's no asymptote or anything like that. So we can have all real x, or x is an element of the real numbers. Now we want to be able to write that in our interval notation. So it's from something to something else. What's our interval? From negative infinity to infinity. Good. 
and of course it can't equal those values, so it's got to be with the round brackets. And then we have set notation, which is going to be D colon curly brackets X such that is a vertical line. X is an element of the real numbers and close your curly brackets. I'm not going to do the range for this one because to do the range for this one, I would need to know what the maximum point of the graph is. And I don't know that. And you probably don't know enough maths yet if you're watching this to be able to do that. So we'll just do the domain. So let's think about what we actually need to remember. What are the things that we've gone over? The domain are the possible X values. The range are the possible Y values. The square brackets means that you include the values. The round brackets means you don't include the values. One is less than X is less than six means X is between one and six, but not equal to. Because if we wanted it to be equal to, you'd need to put the less than or equal to signs. That funny U shape, you remember that we put into the interval notation? What does that mean? It means or, or together with. And the curly brackets with X is an element of the R, that means X is an element of all the real numbers, all the values of X. Now let's think, what if you can't draw the graph? There are some useful tricks that we can do, that we can know for finding the domain if you can't draw the graph. Let's take a look at those. Let's say one over something in brackets. Then the domain is going to be whatever's in those brackets can't equal to zero. Why? Because the denominator in a fraction can never equal zero. So if we're trying to find the domain, we only need to find out what's in the brackets and it can't equal to zero. If you have y equals the square root of something, then the domain is going to be whatever's under the square root, that something, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And you would solve that. And that would be your domain. And if we have y equals 1 over the square root of something, then the domain is whatever's under the square root has to be greater than zero. Because it has to be greater than or equal to, equal to zero because it's under a square root. And it also has to satisfy the top one where the x is on the denominator, so it can't equal zero. Let's just have a quick look at some of those in practice. Remember, we're only finding the domain. Let's say we have y equals 3 over x minus 3. So we know that if this is a fraction, and the denominator can never equal zero. So for the domain, we have to say x minus 3 can't equal zero. And then you just solve it, so x can't equal 3. And that's the domain. But then we have to remember to write it in set notation and interval notation. So if we want to write this in interval notation, x can't equal 3, but it can be everything else. So how would we do that? It means it can be from minus infinity to 3, not including either one of them, which means that you would have to put it in round brackets, and then it can go from 3 to infinity. And what do we do when we have two sections? We have to put the u in the middle, the union. Good. And in set notation, we would say d such that x such that x can't equal 3. Let's take a look at another one. y equals the square root of x plus 5. Now this one's under a square root. And if it's under a square root, we know that it can't be negative. We know that it always has to be positive. So x plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. It can equal 0, remember. So we rearrange it, we get x is greater than or equal to minus 5, and that's the domain. x is greater than or equal to minus 5. In interval notation, that's going to be that it can be from minus 5 to infinity. Remember, it can equal minus 5, so we have to put square brackets right on the left, and then on the right-hand side of the infinity, it's round brackets. Good. And then in set notation, we write d colon, curly bracket, x, such that x is greater than or equal to minus 5, and close the brackets. I hope you're really starting to find these a little bit more doable than what you could before. Let's take a look at an example of the last tricks that I gave you. Let's say we have y equals 4 over the square root of 2x minus 6. 
Now this is the first two together. It's under a square root and it's on the denominator. That means that it has to be positive and it can't equal zero. So it's going to be 2x plus 6 is greater than zero. And then we just solve it. 2x is greater than minus 6 and x is greater than minus 3. And then we just have to write the answers down. So the domain is x is greater than minus 3. The interval notation, it's going to be from negative 3 to infinity, but it can not equal negative 3. So it's got to be round bracket on the left, negative 3 comma infinity with a round bracket. And in set notation, you've got d colon x such that x is greater than minus 3. Close the brackets. Why don't you have a go at some of these and I'll put the answers on the next slide so that you can test yourself and see if they're right. Get a piece of paper, follow the rules. If you need to rewind it so that you can remember what the rules were, then you should do that. And here are the solutions. How did you go? Did you get them right? I hope so. If there was one that you got wrong, maybe go back, rewind the video and see if you can figure out what you did wrong. Good luck with these. I hope it's helped you with domain and range. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tick the notification box so you don't miss out. See you next time. Bye.